vanilla. It's one of our favorite flavors. It's in everything from ice cream to coffee. But for many of the farmers who grow it, life is proving to be anything but sweet. Here's our story. In a remote corner at the edge of the Indian Ocean lies Madagascar. Its creamy vanilla beans considered the market's gold standard. But vanilla, once a steady cash crop, has now become a bitter harvest. We can't sell the vanilla. Swazara grows vanilla beans on the island's lush northeast coast. She used to be able to support her family of six children and grandchildren but no longer. It's too cheap and causes us problems because of lack of profit. It's not like before. Now there is no money. Like Swazara, 70% of the people in this region of the country rely on vanilla production for their livelihood. Some 80,000 farmers tend to the demanding vanilla orchid. In its native Mexico, the orchid is pollinated mostly by bees, but here in Madagascar, it has to be pollinated by hand, with a window of just a few hours for fertilization. The vines need constant care. It takes a farmer 260 days a year to tend to one hectare of vines. And the pods have to be dried for a minimum of six months before they're exported. All this makes vanilla one of the most labor-intensive crops in the world. It also made vanilla very expensive on the global market, even more so since 2004 when a series of catastrophes, including a political coup and devastating cyclones, damaged Madagascar's vanilla crop. With supplies down, prices soared to record levels. Vanilla's high cost made it so valuable, it even became a target for local thieves. Once my vanilla ripened last year, people stole it. I lost about a third of my crop. Afraid, some farmers began harvesting their beans too early, compromising their quality, says Kaiser Jivigi, manager of a vanilla business in Madagascar. There are two reasons for farmers doing this. First of all, they need money. Secondly, they fear theft of their crops. But the main threat to the vanilla farmers lies not here at home, but abroad. When the prices rose very high, the industries that use vanilla changed the composition of their products. Claude Andreas is the president of the Madagascar Vanilla Growers Association. He says that bakeries and ice cream makers worldwide began substituting vanilla for cheaper imitation flavors derived from products like beetroot and rice bran. The consumer is fooled by it as the label continues to show a picture of vanilla or vanilla pods. But in reality, there is no longer any real vanilla inside. Kaiser Givigi agrees. The big problem is that the industrial the big problem is the industries. If they really use 100% natural vanilla, we wouldn't have this problem. The fact is that the term natural vanilla is used by industries when they mix it with a lot of synthetic vanilla. Compounding the problem, he says, is price speculation. Two years ago, there were traders who wanted to speculate, to accumulate huge stocks in Europe. And so clearly, a lot of vanilla was exported then. But the vanilla that was exported has not yet been sold. So we suffer the consequences. 
It's estimated that vanilla that sold for 500 US dollars six years ago now brings only a mere fraction of that price. And perhaps nowhere is the effect of all this more apparent than in Madagascar's warehouses, where boxes of vanilla beans sit untouched, some for years, as global demand for natural vanilla plummets. Nous avons à peu près, uh... We have around 150 tons of vanilla, and its value is between two and a half million and three million dollars. It's money that farmers like Swazara desperately need, but will likely never see unless consumers worldwide notice the substitutes and demand that manufacturers restore the use of real vanilla. When we sell the vanilla, only then do we have money to take care of our daily lives and to take care of our little ones. For now, all she and so many other farmers can do is keep working and dreaming of better days.